above the rugged peaks of the Owen Stanley Mountains in southeastern New Guinea, United States transport planes keep open an aerial supply line to Australian and American troops now taking the offensive against the Japanese. Native Papuan villagers stand in awe of the giant friendly transports that swoop in dropping food and supplies from the sky. Supplies that take six days to come by land, 20 minutes by air. pictures of war as it's fought in the jungle. Loyal natives, intrepid airmen, battling and overcoming the wilderness as well as the Japs. A clean rifle may mean life or death in the jungle. And these are the Australians that defeated the Japs at Kokoda. Now, over trails never traveled by whites, they follow up the attack. Soldiers skilled in all the tricks of jungle warfare. With field mortars and Tommy guns, they blast away at the slightest sound. return from the front for a short and well-earned rest at an advance outpost. The devotion of New Guinea natives to the Allied cause has been a tremendous advantage. Toiling over rough mountain paths, carriers bring back the wounded over a terrain no motor car could ever penetrate. Vividly, dramatically, these scenes bring home a picture of the incredible odds against which the United Nations forces are fighting and winning in the South Pacific. Field hospitals care for minor casualties. Most ask only for a cigarette and a chance to return to the fight. under the command of Australia's General Sir Thomas Blamey, men under the leadership of America's great General Douglas MacArthur. These veterans are among the best fighters in the world. This soldier is thankful he was wearing his tin hat. Here, upon Australia's first line of defense, it rains almost constantly, yet even in the heaviest downpour, they push on through ankle-deep mud. Only 100 miles from the mainland, they're keeping the Japs on the move. Strategic spearhead of the United Nations offensive in the South Pacific.